Hi, this is Corn Cod Ron of Nationalist News and Notes. Uh, today I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, some of the fallout from the NATO summit and uh, Trump's visit to Europe, but primarily about NATO. Uh, I'm very happy that Trump has decided to uh, push hard for European countries within NATO to uh, pay enough money to pay their way better in terms of the expenses for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. You know, they all agreed to pay something on the order of uh, 2% of GDP, and a lot of those countries are paying a lot less than that. America takes up about 22%. Uh, we, we give 22% of the monies necessary to run the organization. And that doesn't count a lot of military assets that would be dedicated to NATO if ever our intervention was needed. It is my hope, and it has been my hope for nearly 30 years since the end of the Cold War, that the United States should leave the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The, uh, if you want to date the end of the Soviet Union as being 1991, you know, which uh, a lot of the scholars say is the official date of the end of the Cold War, then we should have been out a long time ago. Why we're still in there? I think a lot of it has to do with bureaucratic inertia, uh, concerns about Germany becoming a bullying power in Europe. Well, they're already a bullying power in Europe. Uh, they, uh, they boss around all the other EU countries. And there are, you know, but I think it's mostly bureaucratic inertia that that organization even exists. The Soviet Union, or the, the Soviet Union uh, went out of existence 27 years ago. And Russia is no threat to Europe. Don't get me wrong, Russia is still a great defensive power. But There's no reason why a defensive treaty is needed with the Europe, with the other European powers uh, to uh, to keep Russia off the back of Europe. Europe has the personnel and the money to defend itself if they decide they want to do such a thing. That is kind of crazy, you know. It's a, it, it goes on this kind of predication that Vladimir Putin is some sort of madman, which he's not. He's just, a, he's just a fellow that uh, usually does what's best uh, for Russia as an entity. He's not a globalist. He's not an internationalist. He's not a New World Order, right? His only external, main external concern is the well-being of ethnic Russians in uh, the countries that border Russia that used to be part of the Soviet Union. So there really is no reason for NATO. Russia is not the military power it was in 1980 or even 1989. It's not this huge military organization. Russia not what it once was. Now, there's been great improvement in Russia since Putin took over from his predecessors, who were a bunch of crooks. And thanks to his economic policies, Russia's a lot better off than it was. But it doesn't have it doesn't have the people you know, there's been a great population decline in Russia. So nobody but a, but a complete idiot 
running Russia would want to do anything in terms of invading Western Europe. It's really not in the cards. Russia's very much turned inward. They're into economic development. Uh, they're into bringing about more social cohesion. The main, re the main way they're doing the social cohesion thing is that they're actually, the government's actually strengthening the, the, uh, the Russian Orthodox Church as an institution. And it's kind of working. God knows, only God knows if uh, Vladimir Putin's a Christian. But he was smart enough to encourage the development of the uh, Russian Orthodox Church in order to uh, improve public morality and uh, bring about greater social cohesion, especially among ethnic Russians. So Russia is really no direct threat to the, to the West. I know the way the New World Order thinks that anybody that takes an independent line from the global, globalist world order is somehow considered a threat, no matter how large or, or how small a country. But Russia wants to take an independent line. Taking an independent line is not the same as being a hostile power. So, the United States has no reason to be in a military alliance on continental Europe. Just like these calls several years ago, when uh, Russia took Crimea away from the Ukraine. I mean, uh, why should the United States of America be the guarantors of the borders of the Ukraine? Or the the crazy decision by the Clinton administration back in the 90s to uh, welcome the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, into NATO. That was crazy. You know, it's just like a giant tripwire. So if Russia has some sort of border problem with the Baltic states, you know, we're in a world war with, like, nuclear consequences. You know, I mean... Hey, I like the Baltic peoples myself, but frankly, do I do I do I want nuclear war over uh, Riga? Uh, no. <laughs> Russia's gonna have gonna have to have its own of influence in the world uh, because it's a very independent-minded power, and they're gonna stay that way. Russia Russia doesn't want to be slaves to anyone whether it be uh, the idiots in Brussels, international bankers, whatever. Russians want to answer to Russians. Whether it be in a fully democratic state or a mildly authoritarian state like they have now. A mild and benign authoritarian state. And so, Russia, I mean, at, you know, we... What happened was, is when the Cold War ended, stupid George Bush I should have done a complete reassessment of America's strategic position. But he didn't. All these alliances, treaties, and everything were, were kept in place. You know, the U.S. leaders have this ridiculous tendency to see military alliances as being something completely permanent and almost like some sort of oath to the death, which is, of course, insane. You know, anyone who's read any kind of history knows that military alliances are very uh, temporary and fleeting things. Okay, Cold War is over. Let's get out of NATO. Let's break it up. No reason to have a, no reason to have uh, large numbers of troops stationed on the European continent. No American interests are at stake. You know, is America made safer by having troops in Germany? No. 
And the same goes for a lot of a lot of our other alliances. You know, we wouldn't be engaging in this unfortunate tussle with North Korea if we had taken Pat Buchanan's advice 20 plus years ago and decided to get out of the Korean Peninsula. You know, we could have uh, done it gradually, you know, given them some uh, military equipment and such, you know, because we like the North Cor uh, the South Koreans. And we could have uh, we could have gotten out of that tripwire, and of course the same goes for our no benefits uh, military alliance with Israel. What the United States gets from that alliance is a big fat zero. So we got to get out of these ridiculous military alliances that don't help our strategic position. Let Europe go off on her own. Hey, I love Europe. Traveled there as a young man extensively. You know, I value my European blood and my and, and the cultural patrimony of Europe. You know, I think it's a wonderful thing. I'll always love Europe. But do we need to be in some sort of military alliance that's that's not completely necessary? You know, what is it? How much do we spend every year on, on NATO? You know, like $800 million on just the on just the bureaucratic paperwork nonsense alone. And we have to pay 22% of it. For what? To make America safe? No. And if you argue with people about it, you hear people, to, you know, make all these ridiculous assertions about American world leadership. What does that mean? It's meaningless. It's empty words bureaucratic blather. There's no reason for the United States to be in NATO. Western Europe can defend itself and, and do it very well if they have the guts, if they haven't been completely made decadent, if they haven't been completely overwhelmed by Islamic immigration like they're doing. I wouldn't want Angela Merkel, Merkel as an ally, frankly. So let's get the heck the United States out of NATO. This is Corn Cod One for Nationalist News and Notes, signing off.